am and welcome back to my channel. Today I am challenging myself to introduce you to 10 rare dog breeds which you've probably never heard of. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the Creature Crew, and also hit that notification bell down in the corner there so you don't miss a single upload. But before we jump into today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, True Panion. Our pets enrich our lives in so many ways. They're our best friends and as such they deserve the very best in terms of healthcare. True Panion offer a variety of affordable healthcare options which means that if the worst should happen you can rest assured knowing that True Panion has you and your pet covered. My dog Kiba has a healthcare policy with True Panion and it wasn't just the positive customer reviews that I found online which swayed my decision. I also have friends who have been in emergency situations with their pets who were covered by True Panion and fully recommended their services to me. And not only that, but my friends who are veterinarians also personally recommended me to go with True Panion. Whether an issue is discovered during a routine health checkup or if I have an emergency situation with Kiba, True Panion have us covered. And I won't have to worry about not being able to afford unexpected vet bills. If you'd like to find out more about how you can help to protect your pet with the very best in pet health care, visit the link down in my description box below. And thank you once again to True Panion for sponsoring today's video. And since we'll be discussing rare dog breeds, this is uh, actually one that's not going to be in today's video, but this is Kiba. He's my dog. He's a Eurasia. And I love him. And I love him. Are you beautiful? You just burped in my face. So yes, Kiba is a Eurasia and he's a very rare breed, but you're not going to be in this video, so off you go. Bye. Thanks. Now I'm going to be covered in fur for the rest of the century. Rare breed number one. The Chinese Chongqing. The Chinese Chongqing is an ancient breed of dog which is thought to have first appeared around 2000 years ago in the Han Dynasty. They are easily recognized by their gorgeous scrunchy faces, their thick bodies which tend to be a gorgeous blood red liver color, and a very peculiar looking triangular antenna tail. That tail also gives them the name the bamboo dog because it looks like a rod of bamboo. The Chinese Chongqing was originally bred to be a hunting dog. Their powerful bodies and their incredible stamina meant that they were able to bring down incredibly large prey like deer as well as wild boar. However, they're also very agile and therefore able to hunt small prey like rabbits. The breed almost died out a few decades ago when the Chinese Communist Party deemed dog ownership to be criminal extravagance and decadence during a time of food shortage. Many Chinese Chongqing at this time were actually slaughtered for food. Around 30 years later in the 1980s, dog ownership ban was lifted and the Chongqing was able to regain some more popularity. However, the breed did suffer a second hit during the SARS outbreak in which many dogs were culled. Today there are only around 2,000 Chinese Chinese Chongqing in the world, but popularity and interest in the breed is steadily rising. The Chinese Chongqing has a very oily coat which is very low maintenance. You aren't supposed to wash it too often as this could lead to skin irritation. Temperament wise, they are alert, protective, very high energy and can be stubborn and difficult to train. I'm sorry, but can there be a petition to rename the Chinese Chongqing as the Chinese Chong King? Because look at this gorgeous chonk! Look at it! It's so cute! I just want to Wish it. Rare breed number two, the Quaker Hund. The Quaker Hund is a delightful, small sporting dog of Dutch ancestry. The Quaker Hund is said to have been bred in the 16th century where it was originally intended to be a duck decoy dog. The Quaker Hund looks a little bit like an overgrown Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, but they do have some very unique defining features. The first being their long ear tassels, which tend to be a dark brown or black color, as well as their magnificent plumed white tail. The Quaker Hund, along with many other breeds in Europe, Europe during World War II almost went extinct. However, the breed was rescued by the breeding efforts of a very dedicated Baroness, whose name I will try to say now and probably get it wrong, Baroness van Handenbroek van Amstel, I think. 
The Quaker Hunt has been a very useful companion to duck hunters. The dogs wag their long plumed white tails and this lures the ducks closer to the hunters. Come here duckies, come here so that I may give you all the hugs in the world. I'm gonna cuddle you! Although I can't find any definitive evidence, it is also thought that the Quaker Hunt may have contributed to the development of the Nova Scotia Duck Toller. The Quaker Hunt is described to be cheerful, alert, quite laid back in the house, and well behaved. However, they can be a little bit suspicious of strangers, though should not ever be aggressive. Rare dog breed number three, the Shikoku. The Shikoku is a medium but muscular sized spitz breed dog from Japan. They have a very typical spitz like appearance with a double coat, pointed prick ears, a long muzzle and almond shaped eyes, and a curled tail which they proudly carry over their back. The Shikoku was developed on the Japanese island of Shikoku, where they were meant to be developed as a very versatile all-terrain hunting breed of dog. The Shikoku is a very skilled hunter, hunting very well in both a pack as well as singularly in all kinds of weather and terrain. Some of the game they've been used to hunt are wild boar and deer. The Shikoku, also known as the Shikoku Ken, used to be called a different name, but it had its name changed because of confusion. Its former name was the Tosa Inu, but there's another Japanese dog called the Tosa Japanese Fighting Dog. They're two very distinct breeds. So in order to avoid confusion, the Tosa Inu was renamed the Shikoku Ken, and today the Tosa Inu is this dog we see here. In 1937, the Shikoku was declared a living national monument and is now protected in Japan. The Shikoku is an extremely devoted and loyal companion to its family. They are affectionate with a very high energy. They do shed and they also can be reactive to strangers, so early socialization is imperative. Rare breed number four, the Utanorgan. The Utanorgan is a relatively young breed of dog developed in the 1980s by Edwina Harrison. She crossbred the Alaskan Malamute with the Siberian Husky and the German Shepherd. The development of the Utanorgan was to create a breed which looks as close as possible to a wolf, but with no wolf content in it. It was also developed for temperament to be a family companion. The breed's name, Utanorgan, is a Native American word which means spirit of the wolf. Although it is a distinct breed, there are very few kennel clubs which actually recognize the Utanorgan as a distinct breed. The Utanorgan is something of an offshoot breed of the Northern Inuit. The Northern Inuit you might be familiar with because because these were dogs used on the set of Game of Thrones in place of wolves. They were used to represent the Stark children's dire wolves. The Utanorgan will best suit life with people who live a rural lifestyle and a very active lifestyle. A Utanorgan in mismatched hands will become extremely destructive, loud, and potentially reactive to other dogs as well as children and other people. Rare breed number five, the Hungarian Pumi. Very befitting of its lamb-like appearance, the Hungarian Pumi is a small breed of sheepdog which hails from Hungary. The Hungarian Pumi was originally developed to be a compact, fearless and agile herder, able to move flocks of sheep and herds of cattle and pigs along very narrow roads which connected pastures. One Pumi is called a Pumi. Multiple Pumi are actually called Pumik. Along with their teddy bear-like appearance, their other distinguishing features are their curly coats, their erect ears which flop over at the very tops, and their muzzles which take up 45% of the length of their face. Their fearlessness, their agile bodies, and their intelligence make them a great candidate not only for their original intended use as a herder, but also in agility, dog obedience, and in doggy dancing. These same qualities make the Pumi a very poor choice of candidate for families who wish to have a laid back or easygoing dog. They require a lot of stimulation, both physically and mentally, or they can become destructive and difficult to manage. Rare dog breed number six, the Burger Masco. The Bergamasco is a very unique looking, muscular, heavy boned sheepdog. They were originally developed by shepherds in the very cold Italian Alps. The signature characteristic of the Bergamasco is its coat, which is actually comprised of three different types of hair. Closest to their skin, they have a very fine but very dense, oily undercoat. On top of this undercoat, they have very coarse hair, which is very much like a goat's hair. 
And at the very top, they have a woolly outer coat. As the dog matures, the hair weaves itself together to create loose mats. These loose mats help to protect the dog from the elements as well as from predators like wolves. The Bergamasco may look reminiscent of another very peculiar looking dog, the Commodore. The Commodore's coat is very different from the Bergamasco. The Bergamasco has three distinct types of hair which form together to create these flat mats, also known as flocks, whereas the Commodore has only one type of fur, and these spiral together to create locks. As the coat of the Bergamasco serves a purpose, it should not be bathed regularly and it should not be brushed out. However, those who do keep Bergamascos do often brush out around the mouth as well as the ears to help to keep them clean. The Bogomasco makes a very good livestock guardian as well as a very good guard dog. They're described as being patient, alert, observant, with good self-control, as well as good decision-making qualities. Rare dog breed number seven, the Tai Bang Gao. The Tai Bang Gao, at very first glance, looks like it might be a mixture of a bunch of different breeds of dogs, but it is a recognized distinct breed of dog. The Tai Bang Gao originated from a small village temple in central Thailand. It's thought that the breed developed when a black and white female dog was given as a gift to the temple. Due to flooding in the region, the village and the temple became isolated for a period of time. During this time, it's thought that this female black and white dog mated with one of the wild dogs in the area, thought to be perhaps either a doll or the golden jackal. In fact, recent DNA tests show that the Tai Bang Gao has very close links to both the doll as well as the golden jackal, which essentially makes the Bang Gao a very recent hybridization of wild and domestic dog. Although the Thai people are very proud of their two distinct dog breeds, the Thai Bang Gao as well as the Thai Ridgeback, many Thai people are very afraid of the Thai Bang Gao. The reason people are so scared of the Thai Bang Gao is because there are many news reports of Thai Bang Gao attacking people as well as children. However, many keepers, fanciers and breeders of the Thai Bang Gao insist that the Thai Bang Gao that have been attacking people are actually badly raised and poorly socialized crosses of the Thai Bang Gao rather than being the pure bred Thai Bang Gao. The Thai Bang Gao is alert, wary of strangers, and very observant, which makes them an ideal watchdog. When raised in a loving home with positive reinforcement and consistency, the Thai Bang Gao can make a good family companion, but they do tend to form very close bonds with one human. However, due to their reactiveness to other dogs and their stubbornness, I would say that this dog breed is not suitable for the vast majority of novice dog owners. Rare dog breed number eight. The Celium Terrier. The Celium Terrier is a large, robust breed of terrier which was developed in the mid 19th century by Captain John Tucker Edwards, who developed the breed at his Pembrokeshire estate in Wales. As Captain Edwards was an avid hunter, he developed the Celium Terrier in order to be a perfect hunting companion for otters, foxes, and badgers. But today, they're mostly used for hunting smaller prey such as rabbits and pheasants. Celium Terriers are effective affectionately known as Sealies, but also as the couch potato of terriers. This is because although they are extremely intelligent and do have prey drive, for the most part they just want to cuddle up and sleep. Although Celium Terriers are nowadays very rare, they have been very popular with the A-list elite, such as Elizabeth Taylor, Bette Davis, Kerry Grants, and even Alfred Hitchcock. Celium Terriers have also been noted to be popular among the English royalty, with Princess Margaret even refusing to eat her breakfast if her Celies were not brought to her at the same time. Celium Terriers have a very fun-loving clownish nature which makes them a great family companion, but they're also very good watchdogs as well, as they tend to bark at whatever is unfamiliar to them. For the right family, they can make a wonderful family pet as they are a lower energy terrier and a very manageable size. Rare breed number nine, the Kai Ken. The Kai Ken is a very striking dog from Japan, where it's also known as the Tora Inu or the Tiger Dog. It gets its name of the Tiger Dog due to its coat, which is striped and comes in three distinct colors brindle, black brindle, and red brindle, which is the rarest. When the Kai Ken is born, its coat is almost completely black, and it can take between three to five years for its distinctive stripes to emerge. The Kai Ken is a very rare breed of hunting dog developed on the steep mountain slopes of the Yamanashi, where it was predominantly used to hunt wild boar, bears, and kamoshika. 
The Kaiken is incredibly intelligent, very agile, and is truly an all-terrain dog. In fact, the Kaiken have been known to cross rivers and even climb trees in the pursuit of hunting their prey. Despite being an ancient hunting breed, the Kaiken tends to exhibit more affection and loyalty to its owners than other ancient hunting dogs. Which means in an active home and in the right hands with positive reinforcement can make a wonderful family companion. And finally, we come to number 10 on our list of 10 rare breeds of dog, and this dog is probably the rarest of them all. Rare breed of dog number 10, the New Guinea Singing Dog. The New Guinea Singing Dog was discovered by explorers in the 1950s on an expedition of the New Guinea Highlands at very high altitude, over 6,000 feet up. Explorers captured a pair of the New Guinea singing dogs and gifted them to a zoo in Australia where they started their own breeding program. All New Guinea singing dogs in captivity today come from the original pair gifted to the zoo in Australia. Due to the high elevation of the New Guinea singing dog's natural habitat, the New Guinea singing dog has been isolated from other types of dog for centuries and their DNA places them as being an older species than even the dingo. Their signature traits are their stocky bodies and their primitive heads, which look very reminiscent of the now extinct thylacine. So aside from being one of the rarest dogs in the world, they're also one of the most primitive dogs in the world, which gives them their other nickname, the Stone Age Dog. But by far their most recognizable trait is that which gave them their name of the New Guinea Singing Dog, and that is their vocalizations. <coughs> Captive breeding efforts in North America have meant that the New Guinea singing dog is now more available to pet homes than ever before. However, they make terrible pets. They are agile escape artists, they don't often like to be around people, and they do not like the company of most other dogs. They can also be extremely territorial, and they're known to be excessively destructive, not to mention loud. <coughs> These are very long-lived dogs with an average lifespan of 15 to 20 years and very few known health conditions. In order to successfully keep happy New Guinea singing dogs, I would recommend keeping them the way that most zoos around the world do, which is on an outdoor piece of land which is fully fenced and in the company of other New Guinea singing dogs. And with the New Guinea singing dog, we conclude our list of top 10 rare dog breeds which you probably didn't know about. Did I succeed in teaching you a new dog breed? If I did, leave me a comment below or do you have a dog breed which isn't particularly well known leave a comment below and share that information with everybody else thank you guys all so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed today's video if you did please feel free to leave a thumbs up and a comment or share with a fellow dog lover again thank you guys all so much for watching i will see you in another video soon bye